Hello. What I'm going to do in... So I can start again. <clears throat> Hello. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to demonstrate how to create a vendor, but one who has a schedule. So I've done in a previous tutorial just how to create a vendor in general. But in this one, he's only going to offer his services between set times of the day. So if you were to have like a town where, you know, they sell their stuff in the morning and then in the evening, they go and have something to eat, like in Diamond City. Uh, this is the quickest, the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to begin by creating an NPC to be our vendor. And I'm just going to do this as basically as possible. So I'm going to call him Tutorial Vendor Man with the name Vendor. That's going to how it's going to display in the game, and I'm also going to make him unique, which we'll need to do later. So click OK. And tutorial vendor man, he was called. I always go back in to check that this unique flag has remained on, because sometimes if you click, if you fill in these details I and mean, then click into one of these other tabs before you press OK, it'll uh, it'll go away. So I always click back in to make sure that's still on. So for the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put him, give him a vendor container. That's what I'm doing next. So this can be anything. So what we're going to find is an existing container and we're going to edit it and create a unique one to be his vendor thing. So there are actually vanilla vendor chests we could use so we could duplicate somebody's inventory. So we could duplicate like Finch vendor chests if we wanted to. In fact, I'm going to do that because it's the quickest for these purposes. Tutorial underscore vendor locker and we don't need to worry about giving it a name because you're never actually going to see this in the game so this is the stuff that will be sold so anything that is in here is going to be sold so you can edit this and add in additional level lists or individual items if you want to change what's sold and also don't forget to give him money caps vendor vault a1 food he's given for example so that'll be a quantity of ball caps based on various other level lists so i'm going to say okay okay new form and now I'm going to just put him out in a commonwealth. Alright, so we're here in Abernathy Farm. There's already a tutorial guy. There's already two tutorial guys here. But I'll, uh, so I'll place this guy away from them so we can remember which one he was. He was tutorial vendor man. There we go. He's all the way in the back corner. And he won't actually do anything because we haven't set up any AI packages for him or anything. But for the purposes of this tutorial, uh, I'm not bothering with any of that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a faction for him. So I'm just going to right click new here and just put um, tutorial vendor faction. And it doesn't need a name. I'm just going to OK and then go back into it just in case. Because sometimes before, if you edit stuff before, if you, if you go between the tabs before you press it before the NPC, it'll go away. So we want it to be a vendor. And this is where we're going to decide his schedule. So at the moment, this would be 24 hours. So if he's working between hour 0 and hour 24, that's all the hours. So we're going to want him to work between literally any time we want. So let's say we want him to work between 8 and 18. So he's going to work between 8 in the morning and 6 o'clock at night. For his location, um, this would be roughly where we want him to be. So it's default into editor location. I'm not really sure if this matters, but I'm just going to put edit 500. Because what you might do is you probably have a package anyway for him to sit on a piece of furniture or stand there or something. So I'm not really sure if this particular map particularly matters. And we're going to select a buy list. Uh, vendor chems, vendor food, vendor misc. Again, this doesn't really matter because I'm just going to click buy, sell everything, not in list anyway. So um, this means he'll literally buy anything. But if you only want him to buy specific items, you can put vendor chems, vendor food, vendor misc. But I'm going to have him buy everything. And merchant container, we haven't set that up yet. So I'm now going to go and find my container that we made before, which was called Tutorial Vendor Locker. And what we're going to want to do is I'm going to hide this, but you could if you wanted. No, hell, you don't even need to hide it. What you could do is you could click on it, lock it, locked. Uh, requires key. Okay, and, and his vendor chest could be that. You could also put it in a special vendor room. Uh, you could create a whole new cell and put it in there and put the chests in there. Or you could just go like that. So you can't see it. And now I'm going to go back to my faction. Tutorial vendor faction. Just pan down so we can find our chest. Select it. Select it like that. There it is. And keep these as default so that he'll buy stolen and non-stolen items. 
And okay, I don't even know if those functions actually make a difference in Fallout. I know in I think it's Skyrim, you had certain characters who were fences who would buy stolen items, and other people wouldn't. But I don't even know if those work in Fallout. So what we actually have to do is we actually have to put him in the faction now. So if we just nip back to our vendor man up here, we've already defaulted to factions. So I'm going to go new, and we're going to find the faction that we just made. So that's probably better if I put in tutorial vendor faction. There we go. Okay, and save. And that's all we need to do because the fact that he's a vendor isn't really related to any of his other faction relations. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a quest for his actual dialogue. So I'm just going to make a totally fresh one. Tutorial underscore vendor quest. It doesn't need a name. Again, it's priority. It doesn't matter because all he's, all he's doing is this vendor thing. So we don't need to be concerned about priorities for purposes of this tutorial. And we have to OK and save it. And go back into it and that will unlock all these other tabs so next we're going to want to create an alias we're going to right click a uh, new reference alias and we're just going to give it a unique name well it has to be unique within this quest it doesn't have to be unique uh, all in all unique actor and this is why we set the flag to unique before tutorial was it called an underscore vendor man or just better was called tutorial vendor man and we don't need to worry about any of these other flags, so we're just going to hit OK. And after I do anything, I always OK out and save, because the creation kit does have a tendency to crash. So next we're going to want to create a new scene. So I'm going to set up the most basic of dialogue possible for the purposes of this tutorial. So I'm just going to go right click New. Um, and I'm just going to stick Scene at the end of that. OK. Click into it, and then we're going to right click new actor and we're going to select the alias that we made before which we just call vendor play a dialogue and that's going to bring up this greeting double click in here and this is going to be the id for the greetings topic so any greetings we make for this quest are going to be stored within this thing so i'm just going to put greetings at the end so it's clear to us what it is and okay and this is what we're going to do so this will be what he says when um he talks to you if when you first talk to him and it's going to be when he is offering his services so hello how can i help you today that'll do conditions this is the important bit so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to briefly okay out of all this and i'm just going to go to quest data and this is if your if your npc is the only one who's going to be talking in this quest you're not going to have any other npc's dialogue we can just condition straight in here get is alias ref equals vendor okay so now any dialogue in this quest with, with the exception of player responses obviously will be conditioned to be this guy saying it so we don't need to put every single greeting um the condition for him like this is just a faster way of doing it i'm also going to select requires player activation so he's not going to unsolicited um start talking to us and for this condition we're just going to do one condition right click new get offers oh, I pressed one key get offers services now equals one so that means if he's offering his services i.e if this is within the 8 a.m till 6 p.m parameters that we set for his faction he's gonna um uh save this dialogue line so now i'm going to right click add phase end bring up this new phase right click again uh, new action player dialogue so now I'm going to double click into here and for its positive response, um, this is going to be what the player says. So I'm going to put in a prompt, um, just prompt is going to be what's going to be displayed. So I'm going to say, I'd like to buy your stuff. And this is going to be, si this is all going to be silent, obviously, because I'm not, for this tutorial, uh, not bothering putting any actual dialogue in. Okay. Okay. And then obviously all these are going to be blank because I'm not going to fill these in. Uh, I'll fill in with this one. Um, actually, forget it. Actually, forget it. So this response text is what will actually show up in the subtitles. This prompt is what's going to show up in the dialogue uh, selection thing. So this is going to be if we don't want to buy anything after all. So I'm just going to go, no problem, come back later. And we don't need to end running scene because it is only it's the last piece of dialogue in the scene anyway. But I'm just going to put in, I'm going to put it in. 
And so this is going to be if we actually want to buy something. So he's then going to say, here's what I've got. And we're going to uh, add a script here. It's already got this filter in because I've filled up this. It's going to slow down now. So I want to do this. And I'm just going to put in vendor. What might be worth doing to avoid the slowdown when it populates this list if you already have a filter in? Type your filter at the end of the one that's already there and then delete the filter. So then it won't show everything at once. Vendor info script. Okay. And we actually don't need to touch this at all. That is going to all handle uh, for us. So I'm going to OK out of that and save and then just jump back in. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have some dialogue for when... Um, in fact, yeah, we know we do. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go new. And we're going to just put in here, I'm not working at the moment. Come back between 8 and 6. Again, we can just say anything we want. And we don't. We actually don't need to borrow conditioning this at all because he's only got two dialogue lines. So we don't need to put in um, the alias, forget his alias ref to make sure it's him that says it because we already did that by putting it in the box uh, at the start. And we actually don't need to put in any kind of get off of services now condition because of the way the priorities are going to work. So if he offers his services now, he's going to pick this one because this is higher in the priority because it's at the top. If he doesn't offer his services, that's going to be false, which means he'll look to the next one, which is going to be this one, which is um, the only other line in the thing. So he's either going to say that, it's either going to be true or it's not. But if obviously if you want to have more than two lines, um, it might be safer to just get off of services now equals zero. It's functionally going to be, for the purposes of this tutorial, it's actually functionally the same. He's either offering them or he isn't. And if he isn't offering, if he's not offering them, there's no other way. It could be any other value. So you don't actually need to think in. So basically that, and I'm also going to make that player activation. That is pretty much all we need to do. One thing we could do is we could add some idle dialogue in as well if we really wanted to. Um, so if we add idle dialogue in like this, and we can give it a name, mail underscore vendor idle nice what we actually can do is we can go in here and put come to my shop like that condition this forget offers services now equals one and what he's going to do is periodically while he's offering his services he'll just say that so it'll be like if you were walking through the town and he was just going Come to my shop, like he's advertising it basically. So, and then if get offer services now is zero, he won't say it. Just a little bit of an extra, it's not really particularly important for the tutorial. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the game and demonstrate that working. Okay, so we're here in Abernathy Farm, and the current time is, I oh, see you can see he's advertising it there, come to my shop. Um, the current time is nine in the morning, so he should be offering his huh? services. Excuse me. Hello. How can I help you today? Uh, I'd like to buy your stuff. And we have no dialogue set up for this at all. Here's what I've got. There we go, we can buy his gear. Uh, so let's buy a shipment of cloth and a shipment of concrete. Uh, let's buy all that crap. There we go. So now what we want to do is we want to see what happens when it gets to uh, beyond 6 o'clock. So it's set to 19 so it's now seven o'clock at night I'm not working at the moment come back between eight and six absolutely perfect it's worked perfectly and that's basically all there is to the tutorial um, hopefully that was clear hopefully that was useful and interesting thank you for watching and goodbye